Well, thank you all. Uh, my name is uh, Major General Dave Hogue. I am uh, the commander of U.S. Army Africa. And uh, I want to thank you for this opportunity to uh, talk to all of you uh, about my visit here to Algeria. Uh, before I get going on that, let me explain a little bit about what U.S. Army Africa does. It's uh, one of these headquarters that a lot of people don't know anything about, to include uh, some of the people I talked to in the United States military. Uh, we are what is considered a component command, a theater army, and uh, I work for AFRICOM, Major General Ward. He's my boss. So I am the army component, the land forces component to uh, the higher headquarters. Uh, we are stationed in Vicenza, Italy, northern Italy, about an hour from Venice, and that is where my headquarters is at, and it is strictly a headquarters. That means I have a staff and I have personnel that... Uh, that do headquarters type uh, business. Uh, I have no assigned forces, which means uh, I do not have you know, combat forces assigned to my headquarters uh, or combat support or any of that stuff. So when we're doing missions, training missions here in Africa, uh, we go back to the Army and we request forces and the Army then provides units, uh, small units to do whatever we're gonna do. Now, what is our mission? Our primary mission here on the continent of Africa is what we refer to as theater security cooperation. In other words, we come at the request and the permission of the sovereign countries here in Africa uh, to train, to work with, uh, to cooperate with on a variety of uh, areas from just basic command post exercises to uh, doing humanitarian and disaster relief uh, type uh, events, uh, the whole realm. But we, we come only if a nation says, hey, we'd like to do some work with you. We'd like to partner with the U.S. Army forces. Uh, and, and the other piece that's very important is that we are in support of the embassies. And so we do not do anything uh, on our own unilaterally. We work with the countries and work with the embassy. And that's really what our mission set is. Now, we do have responsibility uh, to provide a command post if required, if we have to as assist in a humanitarian disaster and we are requested and, and get tasked. But that's a very small piece of, of our mission set. This is my first trip to Algeria, and I'm here to uh, meet with the leadership of the land forces and develop a relationship and also discuss some of the future uh, training opportunities that both our nations uh, can do together. Yeah, during the last uh, day and a half, I've had the opportunity to meet with uh, uh, the President Council on Counterterrorism, His Excellency, Mr. Razik Barra. Uh, you An opportunity to meet with your Land Forces Commander, Major General Tuffler. And uh, just had uh, the last meeting was with uh, your Secretary General of the Ministry of Defense, uh, Major General Sinhaji. And later on this afternoon, uh, we'll have the opportunity to see your military uh, uh, museum, which I'm really looking forward to and looking at the rich history here in Algeria. Yeah, some of the uh, events we have uh, in the future this year for training, uh, we have a long-range reconnaissance uh, training uh, mission that we're going to be doing together. Uh, we will be doing a counter-improved explosive de uh, device, how you do counter, what we refer to as counter IED uh, with your uh, land forces. And, uh, and finally, we will be having a group of uh, Algerian military personnel going to the United States to look at how we integrate the uh, Center for Lessons Learned into our training program. So a lot of, lot of mutual discussions and mutual benefits uh, this year. And so uh, keeping in with uh, my boss, General Ward's priorities, we are here for uh, continued cooperation and partnership and uh, look forward to uh, continued relationship with the land forces uh, of Algeria. Now, before we get into uh, questions and answers, I, I just want to stay up front. Uh, I think the big item has been the WikiLeaks. Uh, I am not going to discuss WikiLeaks. The policy says I can't. So I just want to throw that out on the table right away. So you all that have that on you, just scratch that through your question thing, OK? Because I, I can't uh, discuss it based on our, our policy. The who what? Davis. Uh, if I knew about any, I probably couldn't talk about them. But I think what you're trying to get to is, you know, do we have any bases here in Algeria? And the question, and the Are answer is willing? no. 
<laughs> we don't have any bases here. Yep. And just to highlight, you know, I'm the Army guy, and what I deal with is land forces to land forces. That's kind of my lane of operation. Uh, there's a whole, there's other folks that deal with other things, but I, I'm the Army guy, and I work with cooperation, I work with training, and I work with engagements and, and relationship building. That's really the primary role and mission of, of, of my command. Uh, Gentlemen has two questions. The first one is, what is your assessment of the security situation in the Sahel region? And the second one is, have you, do you have currently any counterterrorism pro training programs that you have initiated in the region, either with Algeria or with other countries of the region? Okay, great questions. Let's talk about the, uh, the security in the Sahel. Um, first of all, as you know, this is a regional issue where Algeria land forces have taken a, uh, a leadership role and, uh, and it's very impressive the progress that has been made. Um, it is a regional issue. Uh, our support and assistance is based on requests from sovereign countries and so and, and it's really in a, a training piece and so that kind of flows into your, your counterterrorism training. Um, I don't do specific counterterrorism training. It's not what an army does. There's other organizations that work that type of uh, training piece. What we do do is provide assistance when requested to work with those forces that are involved with combating terrorism, which I think we all can agree is a threat to all of us. And, uh, and we teach basic things such as how do you integrate your intelligence? How do you uh, uh, operate in austere environments, et cetera, et cetera. But I do not specifically deal with, with counterterrorism uh, as a mission set. That's not what I do. Bonjour, Tarek Hafid, the Sahel Algérie. Toujours au niveau du Sahel, certains observateurs. Les Sahel d'Algérie Daily newspaper. And his question again is about the Sahel. And they say that many observers say that Mali, the Malian government, is the weak link in counterterrorism in the region, as it is playing an extremely passive role. And the question is. Is this role, or is the standpoint of the Malian government of major concern? Is it worrying to the U.S. government and to the U.S. Africa? Okay. Uh, first of all, uh, I can't speak for the U.S. government. I can speak for U.S. Army Africa because that's what I do. Um, as far as the operations that are going on in the Sahel, uh, you got to re remember that the the regional approach that is being taken place right now between all those involved in that region to combat terrorism is what we would refer to as work in progress. And so with the leadership of the Algerian Armed Forces and the work that they are doing down there for coordination, uh, there's progress being made. Um, and it's going to take a regional approach to do it. So there, there's a lot of work that still needs to be done. But once again, I think everybody understands that combating terrorism is a th or terrorism itself is a threat to all of us. And so, um, you know, that, that's probably about the, the only thing I can say about that, not because I'm avoiding your question, it's just that I'm not going to speculate because I don't know all the details of the operations that are going on currently within the region by the regional uh, leadership, by the sovereign nations here. We're here to support when requested, and we support all 53 countries here in Africa. Uh, and, and we do some work with Egypt as well. Ibrahim Takharoub, du journal L'Expression. Dans quel cas extrême vos, vos forces terrestres vont-elles intervenir au Sahel Au-delà de from L'Expression de l'Union Paper. And the question, de if I understand well, is, is asking the question in what extreme case would you consider military intervention, military action in the Sahel <laughs> That's a great question. Um, me personally and, and this command, we, won't do, we don't do unilateral operations. I mean, that's not my decision to make. Um, for us to do operations, it would have to come at the request of the sovereign country. We don't do unilateral operations because we can. Beatrice Kedish from Agence France Press. Um, after this question, it makes me think about the situation in Ivory Coast. Under which circumstances could we imagine 
if we are on the verge of a civil war, there would be a demand or a possibility that uh, Africa Club would intervene to try to bar uh, an explosion in that country. Yeah, I, I think you're, you're, there's, there's a couple different aspects to that. One is, you know, the evacuation of non-combatants. Uh, that would be a request that would come from the embassy. It would, be, it would work through the State Department channels, and, uh, and of course they would work with whatever authorities are there, plus the other nations that are there. And so, you know, there's always the possibility that we, you know, those type of operations, not, not just talking in Ivory Coast, but anywhere else. So there's a process that goes through. As far as anything else, uh, it would probably go through the international, uh, international process when you look at the United Nations, you know, if you're looking at some type of peacekeeping operation or, or something of that nature. Uh, but those are things that, uh, that there is a, a process, both a, a U.S. process and an international process uh, that all the key players, to include the regional leaderships, uh, would be consulted. Um, like uh, Cote like uh, d'Ivoire, like Ivory Coast, um, in Africa there are many other hotbeds. And from your standpoint, what is the hottest bed in Africa? I think when you, when you look at uh, some of the countries within Africa, I think uh, one of the challenges when I look at it from a, a land force piece is how do you assist with the training and professionalization of a force that has been merged from a lot of other entities. You have maybe a small professional army, and then you have some of the former militia or rebels that are reintegrated into the, the, the army itself, into the society. And so what you have is you, you have some armies out there, and I'm not going to get real specific on which ones. I'll just tell you that front, uh, because I don't want to offend some of the relationships that we have. Uh, but as you look at that and, and how we can assist uh, at the request of those nations to help professionalize those forces, because we all know that a, a professional military is one that, uh, that is, uh, it works for the people. Uh, it, it doesn't, it's, it's not a predator force that goes out and takes that out on the populations. And those, unfortunately, do exist in some areas in Africa. And so we're working closely to, to assist where we can those nations, along with other international folks, because understand, the United States is not the only country that works in Africa. There's other organizations, and we work at, in a partnership with those nations for, uh, to increase security and stability and peace, which is really our, our mantra for our mission set. Now, what I can tell you is that uh, there, are, there are countries out there in, in Africa that are absolutely supporting the UN uh, peacekeeping missions. Uh, both in Amazon and, and Somalia, both up in the Sudan and other places that are contributing forces all the time. And we assist with some of that peacekeeping training. Uh, you can take a look at uh, the Ugandans and, and what they're doing to go after the Lord's Resistance Army, which is a, you know, one of these predator uh, uh, organizations, thugs that are out there, you know, doing bad things to the people. So there's, there's a lot of proactiveness going on in the continent as well. Mohamed Mahdi from Le Quotidien de Ronde in the newspaper, and he has two questions. The first one is, um, what distinction do you make between what's happening in the Nigeria, in, the, uh, in, in Nigeria and also in the Sahel? Do you think it's the same level of dangerousness, and what is your assessment of the situation? And the second question is also in a, and he's using the conditional, he says, in case there is an outbreak or th there are problems in Sudan, what for of assistance and help uh, do you provide for or are you planning to provide Sudan with?